Time keeps on leaving and we keep on moving. When do we pass on our wisdom to the youth? My veteran story, lost ours discussions, fireside chats with the bourbon or two. It's time to hear the story by military veterans. Get yourself ready. It's the Lost Arts Podcast. The Lost Arts with Andrew Cox. Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Lost Art Podcast. The podcast is giving a voice to our veterans. On today's episode, we're going to have part two of my veteran story uh, with retired Marine Melvin Lewis. Uh, But before we get into it, uh, are you enjoying the podcast? Well, then consider becoming a TLA patron. That's the Lost Arts patron. It's through donations that we are able to continue recording podcasts and getting our veteran voices out for all to hear. Just go to the Lost Art website and click on the Become a Patron link at the top. If becoming a TLA patron doesn't work for you and you would rather give a one-time donation, then go to the uh, Lost Art website and scroll down until you see the donations link. Any donation is appreciated. And if you'd like to be a guest on the podcast and tell your story, then email me at the Lost Art with Andrew Cox at gmail.com. That's the Lost Art with Andrew Cox at gmail.com. And as always, we do have merchandise for sale. So go to the website, click that merchandise tab. And uh, it's going to take you. We have shirts, we have hats, we have cups, we have all kinds of goodies for you. Uh, so please support us and go in and, and get your goodies. All right. With that, we have uh, Melvin Lewis back. Mel, how you doing? Hey, good, good. Everything's great. Awesome. Hey, yeah. uh, I think I think where we left off, you were uh, you had just uh, completed the deployment uh, to Afghanistan. Uh, and then uh, why don't you walk us through at that point where where you went, what you did? Sure, sure. Yeah. So uh, when we left Afghanistan, um, again, we were actually even before I mean, um, some things I might want to mention while we were there. My unit again, I love talking about what the what the men did. Right. You know, it's um, because it's always uh, for me, it's not about me. It's about a great job that those young men and women do that. You know, we ask them to do these crazy things. Um, I remember some of the highlights of that tour was. We we initially again, it was a bunch of artillery guys and uh Motor T guys, calm guys, but we were a provisional rifle now responsible for security around Leatherneck and Bastion area. Um, and I, I remember one time we had to uh, escort some guys from the U.S. Geological Survey, um, run security for them. And, and so during that, during the briefing, they came into our COC. And now I remember just sitting there and we had some special forces guys in there and things of that nature. And I remember sitting there just thinking, looking at my young corporals and stuff that's at the conference room table saying, like, you know what, we wouldn't even be allowed in the parking lot of some of these, where these stairs work at in the States. And here we are <laughs> in, her, in our COC, our little tent area here, doing an op, uh, op brief for, for, um, for a mission that we're getting ready to go execute with them, you know? And it's like, so it was very interesting. And I don't even know if these young guys, they're 20, 22 year old guys even realize the magnitude to what they were actually doing. You know, it was very interesting. We had young wow. guys running patrols up the, up the road by them, you know, taking two, three, four vehicles out, um, making decisions and, and, and staying with the ANA, um, for a few days at a time and stuff. And it was just, it was incredible to, to just watch and be a part of that, to, you know, with, I love seeing those young guys do what they do, you know? So yeah, it was good. That, um, that goes to show that, uh, every Marine rifleman and that, and you can do any job, uh, at any Absolutely. point in time, and, and Marines are going to rise to the occasion, which is, you know, at least ninety nine point nine percent of the time they are. So. Yeah, yes, yes, and that's and that that is so true, and that's something that I always tell people all the time. Is like, you know, I get it. We're not infantrymen, and I, I, um, I absolutely infantrymen are absolutely incredible what they do, but you know, the fact that you know, every Marine's a rifleman, you know, you can take that Marine and and get him to do some basic infantry um tactics skill stuff and and the fact that we can do that you know is what makes us so much apart from you know other countries or even other services you know so i love it love it yeah but yeah so um you know so yeah once once the deployment was over um you know we head back and we came back to um to to 10 marines and i went back over to the regimental headquarters as the uh as the first arm um and around during that time, 
um, you know, I remember taking um, some NCOs up to Quantico. I, again, as you can tell, I love I love working with NCOs. And uh, so I, I actually planned a trip and we went up to um, Quantico for about three days and and went and, and got some briefs from the, the MACE. We went out to Weapons Filtering Battalion out at, um, um, on Quantico. We went to uh, MMEA, got briefs from them. And then we went up to 8th and I and saw the, uh, the parade um, the even parade at eighth and I and and um yeah, it was good. And um the Sergeant Major Marine Corps came and 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 um saw us and took photos with them and stuff like that. So it was um it was really good. I mean I had to work with the barracks obviously to get the tickets and stuff like that. But but yeah, and I did that um another time too when I think uh I think the Dakota Myers was getting his uh presented with the Medal of Honor and um wow. I took a whole busload of NCOs up there for that ceremony as well. Um, wow! But yeah, so those are, that's what I, I yeah I love doing. Those. I love getting NCOs involved and and taking them out and developing them. You know, um, so yeah, that's that's what I did uh, while I was there. Uh, did a lot of Marine Corps balls. I was talking about the ball. We ended up having our a late ball just this weekend. Um, well, just a late funk Marine function because uh, we we postponed the ball back in uh, October, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, because of where I'm at now. Um, they found it it wasn't appropriate to have a ball during that time um but we just did one the the embassy did um so we would do a lot of balls when i when i organized balls i always had a committee and i always put the ncos on it you know mm-hmm. let them run because it's, it's it's their ball they're you know they they're gonna they're gonna plan it right you know and um and plus i remember when i was an nco and when the staff nco especially the senior staff nco the sergeant major and the master guns or the master arm plans the ball they do what they think is good. Yeah. But then it, it's boring. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So when I became that guy, I'm like, I'm not gonna make that mistake, right? So I, I get my NCOs and I get every section to give me a give me an NCO or two. And that's the ball committee. And I said, guess what? You guys have the meeting. You want to you're the president of the committee. And when you're done with your meeting on what you want to do, call me in at the the, the last five, 10 minutes. And tell me what you what you came up with, and if there's something that's just way out left field, I'll say no to it. But other than that, you guys do it. We go pick the caterer, you do it. DJ, you do it. So there's no complaints when people start complaining that oh, the ball wasn't good or the food wasn't good. Guess what? It's your fellow NCOs that organize. It's not me, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you say, don't put that on me, Ricky Bobby. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> It was like, who was it from your section that was on the committee? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go 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 complain to him. No, nah, but it but it, it, it was good. And and they they always rise to the occasion, as you know, and they, they'll rise to the occasion and, and do it right. So but um so yeah, so from from there, I mean I, now I'm getting a little bit uh up in uh up in age and up in uh years in the core. Um they moved me over to um headquarters battalion, second Mardiv, um and com company. You know, um, and so, and then I just, I did that with them for, for quite some time. We didn't, obviously with headquarters of the time, we don't get really deployed that much, but we do send vets out um, to support all of the regiments, all the battalions. And uh, so just keeping up with that is, is, um, was, it was a handful um, and making sure that the guys um, make sure everybody's ready, make sure our manning was up and everything like that. Deployments constantly. Um, so yeah, so that's what I did the last um, several years until I uh, retired in um, 2013. Wow, that was a, it. Doesn't seem like that was very long ago, but apparently, apparently, was a little while ago. A little while ago, eleven years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. 2013, <laughs> I retired, um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, so uh, so you did your retirement. And what did you do after retirement? Like, where did you go? So interesting. Uh, yeah. So when I was retiring, um, you know, again, a lot of things were still happening in uh, Afghanistan and things like that. And I I knew a few individuals that did um, um, contract work, right, in Afghanistan. One of the things I didn't want to do, and that's just my personal, you know, um, belief, I did not want to stay in the Lejeune area, the, the Jacksonville area after I retired. Um, problem is my daughter was, uh, getting ready to be a a junior in high school. And you know how that is. She's not going to want to leave 
per se, right? So I was really thinking, let's see. So let me, um, what if I do contract work for a little bit, right? Let her graduate. And then once you graduate, we'll move. The wife and I will move. She go off to college and do whatever. Because I also knew that if you get a job in Lejeune, in the area, <laughs> Two years is going to turn into four is going to turn into six. Because if I said, okay, I'll just work for two years at wherever, you know, on base or wherever. I get the job, GS, if, if, you know, if I'm lucky or whatever. Two years into it, when it's time to move, it'll be roughly about the same time that they might want to move you up, give you a little bit more money. So they'd be like, let's stick around a little bit longer before you know it. Several (laughs) years go by and I'm still in the Lejeune area, you know. So I said, no, let me do contract work for a little bit, um, two years. And then I'll, uh, when she graduates, we'll come back and we'll move. So as, as I was looking for that, and I'm on my you know, downside here, um, I got an email. Uh, and the email says that they were looking for some guys to help with like advising, if you will, training advisor, but in the United Arab Emirates, right? In UAE. Um, okay. okay, I don't know what that is. I'm still thinking it's, similar to the contract work, you know, where you're going into Afghanistan for two months, come back for two weeks, go back for two months, something to that effect. Um, So I emailed the guy, sent my resume, and then I finally got on the phone with him and come to find out it's not the same thing. It's just, a, it's really a regular job. You're just a, a contractor that is advising training, a training unit command, um, a training command here within the UAE armed forces. Um, teach them how to teach their men, you know, basic infantry tactics, leadership and things of that nature. Um, hmm. And so I, you know, I decided to do it. And then at first I was like, well, okay, well, I'll, I'll go over there and I'll do it for the two years and see what happens. Um, but then they were like, no, you could bring your family. I mean, it's, it's, it's United Arab Remnants, it's Dubai, you know, um, at that time in 2013, I, heard of it but you don't really know anything about it so i said okay fine and then my daughter she was like well i'll come only if we can you know if i can do this this and this and i said okay fine so we worked it out so they came over the the wife and daughter came over about six months after i did and um and and she did her last two years of high school here so she graduated from um the american school of dubai here in uh, uae so interesting i have two kids two girls the, the oldest one graduated from Kubasaki in Okinawa and the younger one graduated from the school of Dubai in, uh, in the UAE. Neither one of them graduated from the States. <laughs> That's wild. That's really yeah, cool. yeah. So we're, we're, tra- we're a traveling family. We love to travel. Um, she, she actually spent some time in, um, in Europe, the younger one. And um, she's probably racked up 30 some countries now. I think she just passed me in the amount of countries that she's visited. Yeah. Wow. She uh, she loves to travel and I, we love to travel too. My wife and I we travel a good bit. So yeah, so I'm over here. Um, I've been here ever since 2013. Um, there's a few other service members that are here as well on the same contract. Um, doing similar work. Um, just a, kind of mainly advising some teaching. Um, that at their schoolhouse, if you will. Um, it's almost like you know the staff academy or an MOS school. Um, just helping their their local instructors um, teach their men and, and, you know, we teach as well. Um, yeah. Outside of that, it's just enjoying life. So what, what types of like, uh, what is your normal work schedule as far as w- when you're over there, kind of what are you doing and, and are you actually just teaching classes or, or, or do you get like a very, very similar to uh, the uh, like advanced course or whatever, where you, they come in, they're there for so many, so many days, and then they graduate type of deal. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's an, it's a, for the most part. So what I do, it's an institute. Um, they they go for their uh, promotion courses, like the sergeant's course and the the advanced course, right? Corporal's course. They they come in, and uh, most of the instructions is for the most part are done by um, some locals. We do some instructing as well, but a lot of it is mentoring and making sure that their syllabus and stuff are good, um, advising. Um, specifically, me right now, just the last few years, I I teach their instructor course, so I certify them to be instructors. So me and a few of the local guys. Um, we'll teach them how to be instructors. And if they graduate our course, then they get the the, the title, if you will, of uh, instructor. And then they could go to the other courses and teach on those courses. Oh, yeah. That's cool. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So, the workload is pretty, it's pretty easy, man. Um, yeah. I'm not going to lie. So because we are contractors, really, for the most part, we, um, we do. Remember I was telling you, like when I was in Bangladesh, they work from you know, like seven until maybe one, two, and then they take a break and then they come back in the afternoon. So for us, we don't necessarily come back in the afternoon um, because they'll tend to, we schedule it away so that it's usually something that the local um, instructors can, can do, well, they'll do themselves. So for me, my work schedule is usually, you know, from seven in the morning until maybe about two 30 in the afternoon. And that's it every day. Yeah. Yeah. Bad deal. (laughs) <laughs> no, not a bad deal. Um, intra- and then, and of course, so UAE as a country, and I know, I know this has been studied and researched quite a bit. We actually do a, uh, a four and a half day work week. Um, so Fridays is a half a day. So we do Monday through Thursday, full days. We usually work a little late on Thursdays. And then Fridays is actually half a day. Um, for almost for the whole country, all the government agencies and things like that do a four and a half day work week. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. And, it, yeah. and I, I assume it's productive. Uh, it's, it's very productive. Some of them, they're actually looking, I don't know if they as a country, but I know some people have talked about like a four-day work week, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and and yeah, I mean, the studies, a lot of studies have been done in the US and in Europe about going to a four-day work week uh, yeah. and how it's more productive because, you know, you, you have that work-life balance um, is is so much better. So then, you're, so then your employees are much more... Um, productive uh, yeah. when they're at work um and so i don't know they go to four-day work week i'm i'm happy with that too <laughs> <laughs> Just culturally, there's some, huh? i said i like it yeah exactly right culturally there's some differences but it's good i mean they're they're, they're um they're, they're great um obviously we you know so we balance the the holidays and things like that so as a matter of fact today is the first day of the holy month of ramadan um mm-hmm. And so the the work hours is a little bit chopped because they fast for a whole month, um, and so during the day they they will they work a little bit less, maybe like an hour or so less, two hours less, and then they'll do some things at night as well. Again, not involving us. Um, so for this whole month, it's kind of a um, we tone it back just a little bit. Um, do a lot of prep work. Try not to have any courses in session because you know fasting for a month. Um, it's not really, they're not going to be very energetic. You know, anybody would not be very energetic. Now they do, when I say fast for a month, during the day, sun up to sundown, they fast and then they'll break their fast at sunset and, and until sunrise. Um, so that, that takes a lot out of them. So we try not to, to schedule too many courses during that month. So for us, that's the time for us to get back into and make sure that everything is lined up logistics and, you know, curriculum and stuff like that is all good. Yeah, yeah, so that's what we do and for that month. Very nice. Well, hey, uh, let's talk talk a little bit about uh, some lessons learned type of things. Uh, so as you look back over your career, uh, over your life, those types of things, and uh, let's say you were going to talk to other veterans, and uh, what advice would you give them, you know, as say they're getting out and, and whatever, like they're they, like me just retired or either uh, young guys that are getting out after four years or whatever, what advice would you give them uh, as they move into those veteran ranks? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. So one, I would tell um, it kind of works both ways. I know one thing that I ran into when I was getting out was um, I, I went, when you go to steps and taps, what I realized and I, and I, I, I felt bad about it, you know, to be honest with you is as Marines, right. We're always so, hard right we don't want to we don't want to like duty chair we don't want to go to medical especially once you're an nco and above right it's like no nah, i'm not going to medical you know we, we, i'll just suffer through it right i'll push through it and what i found out as you were doing your um your your, your va claims and things of that nature right if it's not documented it's very difficult to get any sort of compensation for that right and, and what I found out was, because I have um, a, a sister and a brother-in-law that's in the Air Force. My older daughter, she was in the Air Force for quite some time. Um, and other family members were in the Army. What I found out was like, you know, they they go to medical. They put everything in their book, you know? And so when it came time to get out and, and do their steps and times and their VA appointments, 
it was very easy to see the history of something if something was going on with you. Um, and so what I think, what I believe, when I went through it and realized what how we are as Marines, is that we're doing ourselves uh, an injustice in, in a way, right? Um, so I so for those last several months, so I did maybe about a year and a half out, and then I did because um, I did two. Um, I started realizing, like, you know what? If somebody says that they're hurt, let them go to medical. Now, if he wants to go to medical, get it documented, but he still wants to come to the field with us, come on, let's go to the field. He still wants to do his job. But don't tell him don't go to medical or make him feel bad about going to medical so now they don't want to go to medical and um, and now they don't get something documented, you know, and then now they can't get uh, compensation for it. So that was one that I definitely learned uh, the, um on my way out, and I hope that leaders don't do to their men and on any NCOs that are listening to this, don't be ashamed of going to medical, getting it documented. And listen, if you still want to go and do the training and if you still want to go to the field, go to the field. But at least it's in your book that said that you had this injury or your your hand was hurting or your, you know, your your wrist was hurting. Still go to the field, go on the march, go to go do the hike. It's okay. But get it documented, you know, so that way you take care of yourself in the long run. And it's not just for you, because when you're a young corporal and you're single, you have no idea what the future looks like, right? But then when you're a mass sergeant or a first sergeant, a master gunny, and you've got a wife, three kids to, to go to college, and yeah. oh, by the way, your back hurts, and <laughs> you know, and you wish you can get some compensation for that. And it's like, it's difficult, you know, you can't get any anything for it because- when you were a young corporal and sergeant, you were hard as nails, right? You know, nah, suck it up, you know? Nah, so that was one that I would tell um, young people to do. So make sure that your records are straight, not only your medical, but your um, your SRB type stuff is, is uh, well documented because you'll be surprised how many employers out there want to know what you did in the military and they understand what it means right so if you if you can articulate to them what you did as a active duty service member it it helps a lot um with looking for jobs and getting jobs so make sure that your your srb and, and all of your your training is well documented as well that would be something i learned um both the hard way and the helpful way as well yeah um, it's yeah. one <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I have another question for you. So you you've yeah. been married uh, for quite a while. Uh, yeah. So how long? How many years have you been married so far? I'm gonna so put you on the spot. See if you remember, I put me on the spot now, right? So I'm at 28 years. 20, 28. No kidding. I'm coming up on 28 this year. Yeah. yeah. Same. Yeah. So, uh, what advice would you give? Uh, okay, being married so long in the military, right? What advice would you give people in the military, uh, and then uh, even after? Uh, veterans right. or whatever, you know, how do you, how do you make that successful? Yeah. So, okay. So I hope, I hope they consider me successful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now it's, it's good. It's good. You, um, one of the things that we did while we were in is, um, you know, the wife took care of a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff, right? The monthly stuff, paying the bills and things of that nature. And, and we communicated with it, but she did it. And even when I'm home, she did it. Why? Because when I'm deployed, when I'm gone, it's not the time for her to just take it on only when I'm gone. So she did that. Um, and that gave her a sense of, you know, like doing something. Because again, remember, as Marines, we get deployed, we get orders, not even deployed. You get orders and you roll into Camp Pendleton from Camp Lejeune. And within a matter of a day or two, you've got 15 buddies, right? It, all from work. Well, yeah. what does the wife have? Right. It takes her a longer period of time or the spouse a longer period of time to get into the network, you know, of people around and the neighbors and all that kind of stuff. So having something to latch on to when she gets there, hey, continuing the bills and continue this or the house is is good. That's something she owns. I support her in that endeavor. Right. She says no to the kids. I'm supporting her in that endeavor because when I'm gone for seven months, it's only her. So I can't come back and then all of a sudden just, you know, be daddy nice guy. No, no, no. I support her in that sense. Um, so that's one. The other thing too is as much as possible, 
participate in the unit functions and allow them to come to the unit functions as well, right? So that they feel like they're part of the Marine Corps. You know, um, I know some of the spouses don't necessarily want to, but if they feel like they're part, so my wife volunteered with the, you know, the KV network and the Navy Relief Society. And then when we have, um, we have had some good units when they, when we're doing our family days and things of that nature, we would pull in a few spouses to help with the planning. And so she would come to those and, and help and give her two cents and things like that. So that allows them to feel as part of, you know, of the, of the organization. Let them go all out for the ball. Let them yeah. dress up, let them get their gowns, let them do their hair, let them go all out for the ball. Right. It's 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 much it's as much their day as it is ours. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So that's another that would be another thing for those guys that are still in. Um let them be a part of it. As far as getting out and le leaving, um the Marine Corps never leave you. Right. Um, you'll have your motivation room. I see yours in the back. I like it. I'm peeping out <laughs> some of your stuff. Um, but just remember that you're no longer on active duty. Right. So support the Marine Corps, support the men and women in the Marine Corps, but you're not in the Marine Corps anymore. You know what I'm saying? So when I was in, I was at Lejeune. If I'm in Lejeune and I, I go to the movie theaters and I see somebody doing something silly, you know, and I'm at the store, I was at A Double Dog. And I know, like, I say A Double Dog. And if they look, I know they're a Marine. I already got you, right? And then I'll make that correction on you. I don't care. We're out in the middle of Jacksonville. I'm correcting you. And my daughter used to be like, oh, no, Dad, please don't, right? But I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? Now, when I got out, I left that alone. I left it alone. There's there's guys out there. There's other first sergeants. There's other mass sergeants, gunny staff sergeants that have picked up the helm, and mm -hmm. and they're doing a great job, right? Now, will I go over to a veteran and or an active duty guy and say hi and thank you for your service and all of that stuff? Absolutely, but it's not my job anymore to discipline them and 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 do those type of things. You know what I'm saying? So leave that aspect of the Marine Corps alone and take all of those good things with you and 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 share them kind of like what you were doing um yep. you see an old guy at a restaurant you know go over and say hi if you think he's in the military or was in the military and and chat him up you know if you see some young if you're not in the military area and you see a young guy that looks like he's in the military chat him up ask him hey you you're in the service you know you're you're renting a car he's renting a car and you see him Approach him, say hi. I, you know, how you doing? Yeah, you're in the military. Even if you might think that okay, he's you know something is wrong with him as far as the way he's wearing his clothes or whatever, leave that alone. Say hi, tell him, thank him for his service, and and let that go. So leave that behind, but take all of that esprit de corps with you. That's what I would say to individuals that are getting out or just recently got out. Um, because I do know young, young, young active duty guys don't like the old timers still telling them what to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's, true. that's very true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, I don't know how many times people like uh, <laughs> you're on active duty and some guy comes up and you're like, dude, just let it go, man. <laughs> like, please let it go. <laughs> yes. yes. No. So that's what I would tell anyone that is looking to get out. Um, just let it go. Um, what I would tell someone that um, that got out without retiring, because um, a lot of the times people get out after four years or six or eight years, and a lot of times they got out because they had a bad taste in their mouth, right? Um, but then once they're out and they're out and about in the civilian world and realize that the Marine Corps was great, they feel somewhat... Um, embarrassed to admit it you know and to have that sense of motivation there's nothing i don't think anything wrong with it even if you're getting out because you're tired of the staff aren't you? you're tired of pt tired of the 5 30 morning getting up and all that stuff you still did it you still graduated boot camp you still served your country right and even though you got out because you were tired of the bs six months later a year later and you have that new sense of, man, I actually did appreciate my time in the Corps, or I did appreciate how we worked in the Corps because civilian civilian life is not the same. There's nothing wrong with 
liking that and 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 you know bringing a little bit of that back into your life so don't feel like you have to forever you know shun the marine corps just because that's what you did when you decided to get out no it's it's fine we all it's not a mistake it's just what was going on in your life at the time and nobody's take nobody can ever take away what your your service what you've done and you have every right to be proud of it even if you weren't for a minute or whatever you have every right to be proud of it yeah, so, you know, uh, the, another aspect of that is uh, Marines that may have uh, or, or service members that may have gotten in trouble uh, yeah. and, and had, got seen out of the out of the service. Right. Uh, yes. so even those guys like my dad was was like that uh, when he was in he was in during Korea. Uh, he got promoted three times. He got promoted, uh, demoted. Uh, just as much and uh, <laughs> came in a private and left a private, you know, yeah. uh, he just barely made it through. Uh, but you ever talk to him about military service, you know, and he always said how much he appreciated the Marine Corps, how much he loved it, and, you know, and, and all yeah. the lessons that he learned while he was in. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But I mean, he was, he was not a good Marine, not a good yeah. Marine, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it, you know, he did, did well for himself. But at the end of the day, the Marine Corps was good to him. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, cherishing those those times, those lessons learned, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, absolutely. Um, another one would be, uh, you know, for those guys that are still in, bad news doesn't get better with time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you, 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 you know something, something happened, pass it up, pass it up. That, that's get it off your plate because it does not get better with time. You know, don't keep it to yourself. They're going to find out and it's going to be worse if you wait, you know, so let just, just let them know, pass it up. <laughs> yeah. You know? it's, it's not a good thing to be the senior man with a secret. No, it's... no, no, no. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Especially when it's not your secret to keep <laughs> and your decision to make, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's good. Yeah. 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 You know? Um, yeah, that was good. One other one for um, staff and COs uh, that are still on active duty. Listen, we are advisors to the commander, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's not our decision. It's the commander's decision. Um, we're just advising him on the best path forward, right? Um, if he doesn't take your advice, it is what it is. We move on. Um, but make sure we don't present ourselves as the guy that's going, that is making the decision. You know, if you don't do this, I'm going to do that. Well, no, you're not going to do it. The commander's going to do it. But you're going to advise the commander that that's what needs to happen to this young, you know, Marine or whatever. And that's fine if, if you want to do that. But just, you know, again, it's not our decision. It's the commander's decision. Yeah, that's um, really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm the uh, advise and recommend is uh, sometimes a, a tough situation to be in. Uh, especially even like, let's say, uh, you know, you, your officer, right. If say it's, you're in a section or whatever, say your officers are struggling and you're the senior guy uh, and you're trying to give advice, you're trying to do all these things. And uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the officer's officer, it's, it's their choice. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. advise and recommend and hope for the best, you know, exactly. And it's on you, buddy. you can scream and yell at each other. You can do whatever, but when you walk out the door, you're supporting it. You know, I'm supporting it. exactly. It's good or yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just had a conversation about that today. We we're talking about that. It's like at the end of the day, senior man in the room slaps the table, gets everybody's attention, and say, "Hey, this is what we're gonna do." And then you're like, "Aye, aye," and we go forth and do good things. Right? It is what it is. That's yeah. what we. That's the decision was made. All right, let's go do it. You know, and if it works, it works. It doesn't, it doesn't. We hope it works because obviously, when in our line of business, if it doesn't work, that means somebody's probably gonna get hurt. Um, so we hope it works. But yeah, we we go forward and do it you know yeah um, absolutely one other thing maybe the last thing is um when you're doing what you're doing a lot of times you don't know if you're making an impact you don't know if what you're saying people are actually listening especially as a a, a staff NCO or a young off or an officer and you have your young men and you're talking to them and you're trying to do different things and you don't know if they're really getting it um, I will say to tell you that they get it. They get it. A lot of times your impact on a unit or on a group of individuals is not really seen until years later. And sometimes you're already removed from that situation. Um, every now and then you'll be able to come back around or somebody will say something to you and you realize, wow, they were listening. 
You know, every now and then I get a I get a Marine that says something about a story or something that I said um, years ago. And it's like, you know, I give this brief on a Friday, the Liberty brief every Friday. And, and you're like, are they listening? These knuckleheads, are they, why are people still getting in trouble? But no, they're listening. Now, years later, people do do listen. And then you find that some of them had taken on some of your persona and rolled it into their leadership style once they became a senior leader, um, just like I did with some of my mentors coming up. Um, so I was just to say, keep doing what you're doing because somebody is watching. They are listening and they're taking it on, you know? Um, yeah. So and I'll give you one story about that. It's kind of, kind of um, similar. When I was on the drill field, um, I was a senior, I was a senior drill instructor and I had this uh, young third hat, right? Full of fire, energetic as ever. Sergeant Griffin, and I'll say it so hopefully he sees it, he knows. Full of energy, right? And he was so hard on those recruits and I loved it. I mean, he would wear them out all the time. Perfect third hat, all right? And um, so we go through the three months and, but he was such a third hat that he he thought in his head that he literally did hate the recruits, right? You know, you know how you know you have to kind of get into that mindset, right? You know, like they can't do anything right um, in order to get the job done as a third hand. So he did, and he did a great job. But towards the end, you know, which I think for almost everyone, you actually appreciate your third hat more than your than all the other drill instructors on your team because they're the ones that really gave it to you, really mold you into what you are, you know. So towards the end, the, the recruits started coming up to me, you know, last week, the last week and a half. I was like, sir, these recruits, you know, want to thank the senior drill instructor, da, 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 sir. These recruits want to, to thank the, scene, the the drill instructor, Sergeant Griffin, or we want to introduce our families to the drill instructor. Can these recruits do that? You know, stuff like that. And I'm like, listen, I don't know. He's a grown man. It's up to him whether he wants to, you know, do this or not, right? But because so many of them was saying it, I actually approached him with it. And he was like, you know, that Thursday when we had the the, the uh, family day and things like that, and that, or even that Sunday when we would put the hats around the camp, he was like, I don't want to, I don't want to do any of that. I just, I don't want to deal with any of them. I'm like, listen, you, you, you don't realize what an impact you've had on these guys, you know? Um, and he was, he did, he just did not want to do it. So I said, you know what? Forget it. I got it. You're coming with me. Cause usually all the third hats, we put them at the different locations, right. To just make sure everything is good. You know? So I said, fine, you'll come with me. Like you're just going to walk around with me. You're not going to, whatever post you got, don't worry about it. You're going to walk around with me. So him and I stayed together that uh, several hours, you know? And so when the families and the recruits would bring their family up and introduce them to me and say, hi, hi, he'd be standing right off to the side. And after the, you know, the first time he's just kind of standing there, not like, you know, still giving them that mean look, you know, and then, and then they would, one would get the, the, the uh, confidence to say, you know, to introduce him to the, their family and blah, blah, blah. And as we went along more and more would introduce their families and what they would say about the drill instructor and what he did for them and blah, 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 blah. You know, at the end of that night, when we got back to the squad bay and we got ready to put him in the bed, first of all, he stayed with me until lights. He, he could have left at like seven or eight. I think once they got back to the squad bay, he, he stayed with me until we put him to bed. And he said, Sandra, thanks for, for letting me, uh, for, for doing that. Because he didn't realize what an impact he had on it and how much they actually appreciated what he did for them until he was able to see it and they were able to say it. Sometimes they were talking to their family member about him and he's standing right there listening to what they're saying. And he just really appreciated that, you know? Um, so I say that like, they're listening, they're watching you. They, they appreciate what you're doing for them. And you might not see it because three years later, you're, you know, you're gone and there is still at the unit. Every three years we're gone. They appreciate what you do for them. You know, so keep doing what you're doing and um, and everything will be all right. The core will be in good hands if you do that. Yeah, yeah. that's good advice. Yeah. Um, I, I would also uh, add to that. If you're, uh, you know, if you're towing the line and you're being the hard ass and you're making sure just like that third hat did. Right. He's towing the yeah. line. He's making sure. Yeah, he was a hard ass, but they appreciate it. You know, in they the appreciate long it. absolutely. They, they mean, they probably appreciated him more than they appreciated me. I just did the good stuff. I was a senior. I, I gave them mail. 
I, I gave them like five minutes, every couple of minutes to eat and stuff like that, right? What, what is that? He made them Marines. You know, he yeah. made them hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Very yeah, true. yeah. Very so true. they absolutely appreciate that. Um, and and sometimes again, you just in the moment you don't realize it. You know, so yeah, yeah man. And it's so. it's good to take a step back every now and again and and look back over everything and say, you know what? Yeah, I may have been I may have been a hard ass at times, but yeah. it was. It was the right. It's, it's the right. It was thing. the right. It was the right thing to do. Right, and and somebody appreciated it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you got to play your role, whatever role that is. Right. You got you. At the end of the day, that's what it is, right? I mean, it, it's a role, you know. Um, it, it's a role that becomes our life, but it's it's really a role, you know. Yeah. Um, you you find your role and you fit in where you're supposed to be, and if you do that, everything will be fine. You know, yeah. don't try to do something that you, it's not your responsibility, whether it's above you or below you. Don't do it. Just stick to yours. And, you know, if the if the, if it's a corporal thing, let the corporal do it. You know, yeah. yes, you can do it and get it done that much faster and it'll be over and we'll move on. But what have you done for that corporal? You haven't done anything. Right. Because now he doesn't still doesn't know how to do it. You know, yeah. Yeah. no, do it. It might take a little bit longer, but that's fine. Let him do it. Yeah. You know, so I, I I had a guy uh come up to me, Gunny Brooks, at my retirement, and uh, he's a drum major. And of course I was a drum major as well. So I, you know, I, I'm gonna be hard on my drum majors to make sure they yeah, know right. So when I was at uh first more dev band and uh he would come in and he'd be like, Hey, uh, you know, I got this happening or whatever, and I would just always stop and look at him and go, What what does Marine Corps order say? <laughs> and he'd be like, uh and I was like I'm not going to find it for you. It's your job, man. You're the drum major. Go find it. So he'd go out and he'd find it. He'd come back. Okay, this is what it says. Uh, you know, what do you want me to tell him? And I'm like, T tell him what the break court order says. <laughs> like, you have the written proof right there. Go tell him that. And it's really happening. All the first sergeant, call the sergeant major, say, hey, you know, whatever. This is this, yeah. this is that. Uh, you know, but uh, yeah, I was hard on him. I, I wouldn't let him get by with anything. And, uh, so he, when he comes up to me, he's like, I just want to let you know that uh, I'm doing the same thing to everybody else. <laughs> See, like, oh. that, that's, there's a story right there that you have no idea what kind of impact you had until later on, every now and then it comes full circle and you realize, so I, okay, I did good. I did good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, you know, it is what it is though. It's, it's good yeah. though. I had a, I have a similar, I have a similar methodology that I do with the people like that, especially when I was on the drill field was, uh, as a serious gunner sergeant, I'm, you know, the seniors or the other drill sex was coming and be like, serious gunner sergeant. And they're trying to ask me sometimes, like, what does the SOP say? You know? I'm like, okay, well, let's look it up. And we'll break it out and we'll look it up and we'll read it. Now, the little difference is, is like, once we know what the manual says, maybe if we need to bend left or right, okay, fine. But at least we know how far we're bending. You have to start from something, right? So you got to yeah. know. What does the order say? What does the manual say? What am I supposed to do? And then if you want to bend left or right, at least you know. You can't just automatically do something because you have no idea how far away from the manual that you are. So you start with the manual. So I always break it out. Break out a manual. Let's look it up, read it. And then we can have a conversation about what does that mean and what exactly are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. So that way we can answer the question if it comes up, right? We deviate from the manual we know how far we deviated we know why we deviated and then yep. so if we, somebody questions us we can say well the manual says this but we chose to do this because of this mm -hmm. either yeah. they go along with it or they say don't do it again <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But at least we can answer the question you know yeah, yeah. yeah but you got you're right you got to know what it says right you got to know First. where it's supposed to be and what, yes. what everybody wants and then you mm -hmm. can other things but i like that right right absolutely so yeah that's good that's a good one yeah man. well hey um i appreciate you for coming on and doing this i know we're on completely different time zones and uh around the world from each other uh so yeah. it's, it's very special for me to have you on uh you know we got to serve together for a little bit uh yeah. so uh I, yeah just fantastic and it's great hearing it, what you had since you got out and everything what you've been doing uh so i appreciate you i thank you for all the things that you've done man uh, sure. and, hey, and i thank you well, i thank, thank you. you for doing this man this i think this is a great endeavor i know a few people that have done 
not this, but similar things where they've gone around and 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 talk and things like that. And um, I commend you guys and commend anyone that does that because uh, we we need it. I mean, you know, the young guys need to. Well, one, like you said, the stories need to be told, no matter what kind of story it is. Um, and the young guys need to know that uh, there is a there is an end to it and it's a good end you know you you can you you're not the first set of individuals that have gone through it and i wish you all the success with this and um anything at all i can do to help with that by all means let me know it's great yeah i i, I gotta have you back on at some point in time uh, uh maybe i have you on for a fireside chat you know what i call those but uh okay. sit around a round table or something like that and have you do that sometime. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Anytime, man. Anytime at all. Yeah. All right. So awesome. And good luck. Good luck with the uh the um the direction that you're taking this. Um, I think you got you got a good plan. And I th- I think you'll be there's more than enough individuals out there that want to tell their story. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't there's no shortage of uh better. No, no, no. Absolutely. <laughs> Awesome. Well, hey, I thank you again uh, one last time for coming on. Uh, it's fantastic. I love hearing your story. Uh, to all the uh, listeners out there, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hearing uh, Melva's story. Uh, if if you're struggling, you're wanting to think about hurting yourself, somebody else, uh, you can always dial 988, press option one. They're going to be able to put you in contact with somebody that's going to help you out. You can also text 838-255. Again, that's 838-255. Uh, and the same thing, somebody on the other end is going to reach back to you and be able to help you get the help that you may need. Uh, and if you're a young guy, you want to chat online, you can always go to veteranscrisisline.net. And on there, there is a chat icon. Just click that chat icon and then you just uh, chat about everything. Uh, it's all anonymous. You say what you want to say uh, and, and let whatever information you want to let out. Uh, but they're there to help. And that's, that's the VA is out there and they've, they've got this great website. They've got this great thing going on. It's helping a lot of veterans. So please, please, please reach out. One veteran's life loss is one too many. I care about you. Melvin cares about you. All the other veterans care about you. So please, please, please reach out for help. All right. With that, Melvin, thanks again. One last time. And, uh, to all the listeners, stay motivated, change your socks. Hoorah. <laughs>